So check this out. We are at an Electrify America station about to plug in a Tesla Model 3. And before today, this really wasn't possible. And if this works, this will open up a world of possibilities for Tesla owners and people looking to fast charge where there aren't superchargers. We'll no longer be locked into just using Tesla superchargers for DC fast charging and possibly open up new routes across the US. The key to making this work is this guy right here. So let's back up and talk about what this is, why it's important, and why you might wanna pick one up. First off is just the name. This is the Tesla CCS Combo One Adapter. And basically what this does is take non-Tesla ports and convert them to a Tesla plug to plug into a Tesla vehicle, which can open up fast charging on non-Tesla stations. So if you're not familiar with EVs or just plug types in general, here's the quick refresher. There is fast charging and there's AC charging. So for AC or level two charging, there's already an adapter for that. Tesla includes one of these with every vehicle and this takes the common standard plug for non-Tesla vehicles and converts it to the Tesla plug. So you can just plug in your Tesla vehicle on basically any level two charger. But those level two chargers are really slow. This is, this is great for using out in public if you find free charging or there's level two charging at a hotel or something. But if you want to fast charge, you are locked into the Tesla supercharger network. So if you are going somewhere that doesn't have supercharging, you're stuck using this adapter on a level two or plugging into a regular wall outlet. You've really got no other options for fast charging. And what this is going to do is open up a ton of new options for fast charging using the common standard that basically all other vehicles use. So for fast charging, there are three main plug types. There's CCS, there is CHAdeMO, and there's Tesla. So the CCS plug is what most new vehicles are using nowadays. Basically any new vehicle I've seen coming to the United States is using that CCS port now. And that is pretty much the new standard for the United States. CHAdeMO is also one that some use, but that's pretty much gone away at this point. The Nissan Leaf is really the only new vehicle I've seen that is still using it, and I'm guessing they're gonna switch away from that very soon. And the only reason I bring that up is because there was a CHAdeMO to Tesla adapter available that used to be sold in the United States, and you might see some Tesla owners using that still. And that's why this adapter is so important. So basically what this is doing is taking the CCS port that is on basically every fast charger that isn't a Tesla, and converting it to the Tesla plug so that Tesla vehicles can plug in and charge. So there you go, that's the video. Thanks so much for watching. Actually, no, it's not, it's not that simple, unfortunately, and there's a little bit more explanation into how this works. Fast charging does seem really easy from the driver's perspective. You're essentially plugging in your car like you would any other device, and as soon as you authorize the charge, it starts charging. But unfortunately, from the car's perspective and the charger's perspective, there's a lot more that goes on that we as drivers don't generally see. And to kind of make this simple, I'm gonna call Tesla or Tesla chargers red, and I'm gonna call CCS chargers and CCS ports and CCS plugs green, just to make it a little bit more simple. So when you plug in a Tesla vehicle, there is a red signal, if you will, that comes from the Tesla vehicle to the Tesla charger. So if you're sending that red signal to the charger, it understands it, it knows what's going on, it recognizes your vehicle, it starts the charge, it adjusts voltage and current and all that fun electricity stuff to make sure that the car is being charged in a safe way and charging it up properly. On the flip side, if you're in a car with a CCS plug, let's say you pull up with your Rivian to an Electrify America station and plug in, there's a green signal, if you will, that goes between the car and the charger to do the same thing, tell that charger how to behave, do all that electricity stuff, tell how many volts to push out, how much current to push out, so that it is charging that car properly. Some issues arise if you try to plug in a Tesla vehicle that understands red signals into a charger that understands green signals. There's a little bit of translation that needs to go on there so that you can charge those cars properly. 
And Tesla figured this out with the Chatamo connector. So if you remember, Tesla used to sell the big Chatamo adapter that would plug into the Chatamo port. You could then use that to plug into your Tesla vehicle. And the reason it was so big is because it had electronics in there to actually convert some of the signals properly to tell the charger what to do. So it would come out of the vehicle as the red signal, if you will, go through that adapter, be converted, and then it would tell the vehicle what is going on with that blue signal. But what makes this adapter so special is it's so much smaller. Like, look at this. It's, it's tiny compared to the Chatamo adapter. And this is actually a passive adapter. So the Chatamo adapter was an active adapter. So it had some electronics in there that did that translation. Whereas this, this is essentially just a, uh, a passive adapter. So it plugs in, it essentially just connects the, uh, connects the pins on this to the pin, correct pins on the Tesla vehicle and activates charging on the car, which sounds really simple, but it is not. And if you've looked in your Tesla vehicle, you drive a Tesla, you might see that they've recently added the CCS adapter support into the software menu so you can see if you actually are able to use this adapter. And the reason for that is the translation doesn't happen in the adapter itself. There is actually a charge port ECU in each vehicle. That's a little electronic control unit. And what's the, what this does is actually doing the translation and helping the car determine what signals uh, are going back and forth between the charger and the vehicle. So instead of this charger or this uh, adapter doing that translation, it's the car itself that's actually translating those signals to the CCS standard so that it can plug in to a CCS charger. And that's really the main reason this video wasn't shorter. I wanted to make this whole explanation to help people understand why their vehicle might have support and why they might not have support. And that kind of brings us to another discussion about retrofits and how you can get support for this. So there is a DIY method to add support to your vehicle that really dives into the technical details of what you need to get CCS adapter support on your car. I won't dive into all the details here, but I'll link that discussion from the forums down below as well. Basically, there is a charge port ECU upgrade you need for this CCS adapter support. And some Tesla vehicles have it, others don't. There's a whole discussion on why they do or don't have it in that forum, so I'll leave you to check that out uh, after the video. So the way you can check in your vehicle, if you do drive a Tesla, if this adapter will actually work on your vehicle is you go into the software menu and then click on additional vehicle information. If you click on that, there's a little uh, line of text that says CCS adapter support. It'll either say enabled or not supported. So mine unfortunately is not supported, which is why I enlisted some friends help for this video to test out their vehicle that did have support and it did successfully charge. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So first off, unfortunately, it's not as seamless as a Tesla supercharger because Tesla has made it basically as, as simple as you can make charging. You essentially pull up in your vehicle, you plug in and your vehicle starts charging. It just happens really easily. But I think this is the next best thing. It was, it was fairly simple. You essentially come up to the charger, you plug in your vehicle. First off, we had to attach the adapter because we were using this. So the adapter connects to the CCS port that is on the charger, and then the other end goes into the Tesla vehicle. And after everything is plugged in, you can pay for charging. So luckily here, this, this charger had a credit card reader that was attached to it. So I was able to use Google Pay and just tap my phone on the charger and activate charging. And once I paid, the charger showed it was ready and the Model 3 we had plugged in started charging. I had my buddy get the car down to 14% because we really wanted to see the maximum charging speed possible. This adapter is rated for around 150 kW, which is kind of the V2 supercharger level, but I'm thinking that this is the continuous rating. So electrical equipment usually has a continuous rating and a max rating. So continuous would be it's like operating all the time, whereas a peak rating would just be maybe for a couple minutes, which is how charging usually happens. You're at this peak rate for 10 to 15 minutes at the most, and then that charge rate starts to drop off. So the adapter can last those few minutes while you're at the highest rate even above 150 kW, it's probably fine, just as long as you're not doing it continuously above 150 kW. And to be clear, this was a 350 kW Electrify America station, so that was our max here. And our control here is the Tesla V3 supercharger, so around 250 kW. 
So ideally, if we pulled in with this vehicle to a V3 supercharger, we would see the max rate of 250 kW. And once we plugged in, charging did slowly ramp up and it topped out around 166 to 167 kW. Definitely really good and even faster than normal supercharging on V2 stations, which tops out 150 kW, like I mentioned. But the one thing we forgot to do was preheat the battery, which you can't really do manually unless you navigate to a supercharger in a Tesla vehicle. And it was a pretty warm day, but I think that preconditioning might have helped us get a little bit higher. The vehicle started at that 14%, charged for around 11 minutes, and bumped us up to 44%, so added about 30% across the whole charging session. And total cost was 43 cents a kilowatt hour and total cost for that session was $10.63. And unplugging wasn't that difficult at all. We did have to uh, just remember to take the adapter with us. And one thing to keep in mind with this is this actually locks to the vehicle, which is really nice. So if you've used this little AC adapter before for level two stations out in the wild, this does not lock to the vehicle. So theoretically somebody can un come up to your vehicle and just unplug it. But with this adapter, this actually has this little pin up top here, and that is the locking mechanism for this adapter. So when you attach the CCS plug to one side and then plug into your vehicle, this pin covers the little latch on the top of the CCS plug, and that locks it to your vehicle. The only downside of this is actually while the vehicle was plugged in, I was able to go up to the vehicle and press on the latch enough to stop the charging session. So I wasn't able to fully unlock it and pull it off the car, but I was still able to stop the charging session, which made me a little bit concerned uh, that somebody can just come up and do that if I'm away from my car. So now time to answer some questions about this adapter and uh, basically how I got it, because this is not available in the US right now. The only store that is selling it is the Tesla official South Korea store. So I actually got this one ordering direct from the Tesla store and had it shipped to a forwarder in South Korea that then sent it to Ohio where I'm at uh, for testing. So I did that, but now there's a site called Harimio or Harimeo, I'm not, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I'll have it linked down below where they're actually selling this adapter for around 300 bucks a piece. And that is shipped too. So definitely uh, definitely the way to go if that's still available when this video posts. So the big question is, is this worth the 250 to $300 to get charging capabilities on other non-Tesla fast chargers? And I think uh, it is a nice tool to have, but there's a couple things to consider here. First off is just if you have CCS adapter support. So if you don't have support, there's no point in getting this adapter because you're not gonna be able to use it, at least right now. The other question is, are you going places where there aren't Tesla superchargers? If you've got a lot of superchargers in your area, it's probably not worth it to spend the, the $250 when you can just use the Tesla superchargers. They're, they're easier to use, and uh, there's not a lot of fuss really with, with plugging and unplugging or anything like that. But if you do have superchargers in your area and uh, they are crowded or they are expensive, this can definitely give you another option and kind of open up your charging capabilities, especially on the fast charging side. Whereas I think in California, especially supercharging has gotten really crowded just because there's tons of vehicles out there. And Electrify America is a good alternative for Tesla owners if you have that support and can use one of these adapters. So. That's my thoughts with the adapter here. Hopefully I covered everything. If you have any questions on this, definitely let me know down in the comments. And uh, let me know what you think of the adapter. Do you think uh, Tesla needs to bring this to the US store or what? I know I've been looking for it for a long time and it'll open a lot of things up. So final thing here before I sign off, I did launch my merch store finally. So you can pick up some uh, Sibs apparel, Sibs electric merch uh, at my store linked down in the description as well. It's sibs-shop.com. So if you go there, I've got tons of cool stuff with my logo and design on there, as well as the It's a Great Day to Drive Electric Tea from my, my daily tweets. So that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.